Hi, I'm Michelle Sterling for Friends of Science Society. It's RRSP time, and perhaps time that you check in with your bank and pension fund trustee to see if they're being bamboozled to divert your funds into nonsense investments. I refer to this. Tides Canada, largely considered the body that has funded and most influenced the tar sands campaign that has cratered the Alberta economy, is now pushing pension fund trustees to divest from oil and gas stocks and invest in renewables. Tides is a federally registered charity that is rich beyond compare, and it got that way with tax subsidies from you. And now it wants your hard-earned savings to be put into low-carbon investments like renewables, an industry that the CEO of Iberola in Spain has described as facing an Enron-style collapse. Tide's report is based on alleged climate risks and cites Mark Carney, former Bank of Canada, then Bank of England governor, and the task force on climate risk disclosure that he set up. However, Roger Pielke Jr. has revealed that the hysteria about climate risk is based on a flawed report promoted by two green billionaires, one of whom ended up the chair of the Task Force on Climate Risk Disclosure. Conflict of interest, anyone? Likewise, a new report by Robert Lyman, When Climate Prophecy Fails, shows that catastrophic predictions on climate change are not supported by the evidence. As we have reported, a flock of green billionaires has funded environmental groups worldwide to demonize coal, oil, and natural gas, and to push carbon trading, price on carbon, and renewables. But what are renewables made from? Wasteful quantities of oil, natural gas, and coal. The task force and tides claim that these initiatives to invest in renewables also meet ESG, environmental, social, and governance goals. These are artificial constructs that are certainly not reflected in the world of renewables investment. Environment, social, governance, really? Dead bats, dead birds, rare raptors, unrecyclable wind turbine fins simply buried under meters of sand. Out of sight, out of mind, child labor for rare minerals, and toxic wastelands in China where people work with no hazmat gear and there are no environmental standards. On top of all this, recent news indicates that the Pembina Institute, one of the anti-oil sands tar sands campaign partners, is certifying investments as meeting ESG standards. Remember that Pembina was a main proponent of the catastrophic Green Energy Act in Ontario, which has destroyed the lives of many middle class and poor people, upended manufacturing with high power costs, and wrung taxpayers dry with billions of dollars of spilled power that went south of the border and did nothing for Ontarians. Parker Gallant has a never-ending flood of reports on the devastation wrought by the Green Energy Act, promoted by these folks who claim authority as environment, social, and governance experts. The National Post just ran an article entitled, Beware of Green Central Bankers Out to Punish Canadian Banks That Support Oil and Gas. And indeed, it seems like global markets are now being skewed by activists, institutional investors, and pension funds that are signatory to the unelected, unaccountable, transnational United Nations Principles for Responsible Investment, or UNPRI. I've given a few talks on this organization, and to my surprise, Almost no one, even people in financial markets, are aware of the overriding negative influence of this unaccountable organization on our energy policies. In Mark Carney's famous speech to Lloyds of London in 2015, Breaking the Tragedy of the Horizon, wherein he claimed a climate catastrophe was looming, he said, we don't need an army of actuaries to tell us the catastrophic impacts of climate change will be felt beyond the traditional horizons of most actors. 
But in fact, the actuaries can't seem to find the evidence to support Mr. Carney's claims, which is perhaps why he doesn't want an army of actuaries looking into things. The actuaries go on to say, first, that losses due to extreme weather events are large and increasing, yet most of those losses are due to increasing wealth and population, yielding increased exposure to risk. And second, that estimates of loss due to extreme weather have been and are and are very likely to be very imprecise. This is contrary to all the doom and gloom attached to every extreme weather event. And this material is from actuaries, the people whose lives are dedicated to managing risk. We issued this report, Misguided Math, Misinterpreted Science, to respond to the Canadian actuarial report, Time to Act showing them the bizarre manipulations of data in the climate world. Actuaries understand that. Ordinary policymakers like elected officials and bankers probably don't. So ask your pension fund and institutional investors if they're investing in coal, oil, and natural gas, the fuels that power modern society, that make modern medicine possible, and that have made our lives comfortable and given us immeasurable freedoms. Or are they investing in a dog's breakfast of things like renewables and carbon markets, which entail the lack of delivery of an invisible substance to no one? And while you're at it, why not ask the Charities Directorate at the Canada Revenue Agency, how is the Tides Canada effort to push certain investments on pension funds a charitable activity? It's important that we jump start Canada with solid investments in the energy and resource sector and abandon these unaccountable influencers who have so damaged our economy. For Friends of Science Society, I'm Michelle Sterling.